state. Yes. So if somebody on the front lines of government surveillance, you know, like that calls it a police state, I certainly don't think it's crazy to agree. Yes, he, he was head of the uh, global head of technology for the NSA. And uh, we interviewed him on this show and he said, that was William Benny, he said, I have watched for decades he worked for them for over 30 years he said i've watched for decades what's going on what went on in east germany in the soviet union and he said that is what is happening here now and he had said about six to nine months earlier he said we're this close to police state and held his fingers very close to each other but at that point he was saying we are in a police state there is absolutely no doubt about it let's go to uh, fred in nevada fred hi how are you doing good what's your question good Good. Uh, my question is, how can the police department make an agreement with the Stingray uh, device or the manufacturer? It's non-disclosure if it violates what the Constitution says, because that would be an unenforceable contract. As if you and I made a deal for me to buy uh, cocaine from you, I take the cocaine and don't pay you. I mean, how are you going to sue me? It's, it's an illegal contract to begin with. But it seems that the same laws that are supposed to apply apply to everyone in our country, including the president or a dog catcher, has changed. And when they're allowed to violate the law and not accountable for their actions, then you have what our founding fathers feared the most. And we become uh, a country that, that is, has really become lawless. And uh, I hate to use the term banana republic, but oh, yeah. that's really what it's headed toward. But oh, we're I, so much far ahead of... I, I, think it's, I, I think we're far more dangerous than a banana republic because our government is, is far more powerful. As I mentioned earlier in the program, the Asymmetric Warfare Group, when they were talking about you know, supporting these different governments throughout the Middle East, they said, uh, if we're going to get in involved uh, in a counterinsurgency... Um, uh, trying to put that down, how do we determine which of these governments are, are legitimate? And he said, well, one of the ways that you look at that is how much security do they need to apply in order to maintain stability? And by that yardstick, I would say that we are a banana republic. But, but Cheryl, what about accountability? What do we do to hold these police departments accountable? Well, police departments still have to go through local county uh, governments and county boards for their funding. So you can certainly attend some of your local county and city meetings and make your case, you know, petition your uh, local representatives to rein in some of these police powers. There have been a couple of news stories um, in recent weeks that have shown people who do just that have alerted the uh, county officials to some of these, you know, police uh police uh, devices that they want to buy and and the the city councils have said no and put a stop to it so there is some action that americans can take exactly in a lot of places i think what you're talking about where they want to bring in mrap vehicles into very small towns i, I mean close to where i live there's a, a community just outside of austin and there's a body shop there that uh, had this big sign up complaining about the deficit and how many trillions of dollars it was. And then I needed some body work done on my car. I looked them up on the Internet and they're bragging about how they donated a paint job to the police department that just got a new MRAP. And it's like, why does my small town need a mine proof vehicle that they're using in places like, like Afghanistan and Iraq? Everybody ought to be asking themselves that question. And if this guy is worried about the deficit, he ought to definitely ask himself that question. That's the kind of cognitive dissonance that we need to try to get to. That's why I really welcome a book like yours that not only breaks this down for people and helps them to understand, as you pointed out earlier, these are not few and far between, but this is a pervasive pattern that is happening all over this country. And the only places where we've seen this stopped is in a few places like New Hampshire and other places where they saw that the police department was going to get one of these vehicles and they said, we don't want that here. We don't want that donated to our police department. People have to get involved there. But I think, Cheryl, there's also the another kind of accountability, and that is when we see these kind of uh, interactions between the police and the public that are now becoming commonplace where they shoot with tasers or just like they killed that 95-year-old World War II veteran uh, with a beanbag shotgun at a close range. They tried to shoot him with a taser and they, they didn't get him with a taser. 
We see that the police do not want to physically engage people, and they would rather kill somebody than take the risk that they're going to get a punch in the face. And, and we see that being encouraged by the federal government with new rules of engagement. Out in Albuquerque, New Mexico, they actually have the State Police Academy teaching a uh, shoot-first curriculum. That's the way one of the police instructors described it before he resigned in protest, refusing to teach that to people. Yeah, it's ridiculous it, because most people remember it was just a few short years ago that your local police department were tasked with the mission of serve and protect. They were the friendly officers, you know, that would that would engage with the public, um, chat. They were they knew who people were in their neighborhood neighborhoods and on their uh, beats and so forth. And now the entire mindset of local police departments have shifted to one of intimidation and aggression, where you know even the most innocent of Americans American walking down the street is a suspect for something that may occur. Mm -hmm. And this mindset is, is really something that should be alarming to most Americans because what, Hang what on. it's about. We've got to take a break and we're going to come right back. And I think there also needs to be an accountability to the police department itself and to the officers. Or are you going to wind up with a situation just like we have at the borders where they're told that they can get away with it? So they do it. And that's what's happening at the police departments over and over again. Stay with us. We're going to be right back with Cheryl Chumley, Police State USA. Every business owner knows how tough it is to get financing for their business. Whether the cash is needed for expansion, repairs, or growth, when you need financing, you need a reliable source. Banks are happy to hold your deposits, but don't bother to ask them for a business loan. For 10 years, Merchant Capital Source has been helping small businesses just like yours get the money they need. If your business needs as much as $250,000, Merchant Capital Source can deliver in as little as three to five days even if you have poor credit. If you've been in business for six months and produce at least $15,000 in monthly sales, there's a good chance you'll qualify. At Talk About Hassle Free, we don't need to see your tax returns, financial statements, or business plans. Rated A-plus by the Better Business Bureau. Join the thousands of business owners who've learned the secret of using Merchant Capital Source to meet their capital needs. Log on to mccash.com right now for a free quote. That's mccash.com or call 800-296-0772. That's 800 800-296-0772. 800-296-0772. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the basketball. Alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. InfoWars building independent media operations. We let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. A popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulting us. Targeting of patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at InfoWars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative. Destroy Prison Planet TV. you got to set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out. Intellectually, it's because you can feel it. It's been said, those who control the food, control the people. Are you concerned about GMO foods making you sick and affecting your mind? Many people suffer from lack of energy, insomnia, loss of stamina, weight gain, and the inability to think clearly. Genetically modified crops, processed foods, and toxic chemicals can compromise your health and are silently destroying your digestive system, which accounts for 80% of your immune system. Take back control of your health with Pro-EM1 Probiotic from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 Probiotic helps protect your body against irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, diabetes, the common cold, and much more. And including a powerful probiotic like Pro-EM1 as part of your daily routine puts you back in control and prevents you from becoming a mindless zombie manipulated by the pharmaceutical and GMO agendas. Call Terraganics at 866-369-3678 or visit Terraganics.com. T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I'm joined on the phone with Cheryl Chumley, author of Police State USA, a book that we sell here at InfoWarsStore.com. And this is what we're talking. Uh, I, I keep going back to this letter from the ACLU and the Electronic Frontier Foundation talking about this new FBI biometric uh, data system. And they said it's essential for the American public to have a complete picture 
of all the programs and authorities that the FBI uses to track our daily lives and an understanding of how those programs affect our civil rights and civil liberties. That's very true. That's what this book is about. That's what InfoWars is about. We're trying to get people to understand what is happening, to get a complete picture of what's happening. And then to also understand, as she points out here, that our rights come from God, not from government. They're not privileges. They are, in fact, absolute. And if that terrorizes Hillary Clinton, then so be it. Because that's what our Constitution, what our Declaration of Independence says. We possess certain rights as individuals, and if we don't understand what those are and how they're being taken away, we are just going to become sheep for the system. Uh, we're taking some of your calls uh, for Cheryl. Uh, let's go to Gerald in Arkansas. Gerald, it says that you're a vet and you want to talk about the Constitution. Go ahead, uh, give us your question. Yes, you guys are doing a great job. I am a full supporter of uh, what you guys are doing, and it is an info war. Yes. Uh, you got to do your homework, and our rights come from God. I, uh, and that's what we, it's not taught in schools anymore. You refer to the, we, I believe we need to quit referring to this as our government. It's a corporate government that the bankers control through the fi private Federal Reserve banking system. Now, you guys know all about that, but That's right. the average public doesn't, uh, David and Cheryl. Now, the other thing that I have not seen brought up, uh, I, I was fortunate. I, one of my tutors uh, was a, a law barrister. The word barrister uh, is comes from common law. We're still under common law, but you won't see that taught. Uh, attorney, an attorney is not a lawyer. An attorney comes from the French word a torn. It means take from the people and give to the landowner. So to be uh, a lawyer, a true lawyer, a barrister, you have to study common law and understand that our rights come from God through the common law that the founding fathers set up. Now, you can put this in your Google. I, think, I wish more people would do it. Under Uniform Commercial Code. 1-103 colon 6 common law. It says common law is still in effect. We just don't see people uh, 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 educating themselves that you can right. bring a common law action, which actually trumps the statute commercial realm. Uniform Do you want to comment? Do you want to comment on that, Cheryl? Talk about uh, where our rights come from and how we get them back. Well, I, I definitely, of course, our rights come from God. I'll have to Google what it was that he was mentioning, but mm -hmm. going back to the Federal Reserve and so forth, you know, we, we could overcome quite a bit of government encroachment if we did return to the gold standard. And, you know, we stopped, um, you know, the economic tyranny that's going on in our nation, too. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Gerald, Arkansas. Let's go to uh, Tom in Maryland. Tom? Good afternoon. Thank hey. you so much. Ms. Chumley, for writing your book. Uh, I'm a former retired police detective, um, and police who are weak in character, lacking in knowledge, and of weak moral stock will blatantly break departmental rules, general orders, and the law. As far as a remedy, a good place, in my opinion, to start as far as getting police departments acting right is to weed out these types and start uh, looking for and hiring and making it a priority uh, to hire folks who are looking for a profession they feel called to as an honorable duty and not just looking for a job. Very well said. Thank you so much. Uh, it's Tom in Maryland, retired police detective. We're out of time where I'd have Cheryl respond to you. Cheryl Chumley, thank you so much for joining us. A great book. People need to understand what is happening, and they need to understand how we roll this back, and it's not an easy answer. We have to change the way we view our rights. Thank you very much for joining you us. You are listening to GCN. Stay tuned. I'm going to take some more calls right after we come this back in overdrive. I'm going to try to get a hold of Jim in West Virginia, Jay in Wisconsin, Michael in Louisiana. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Grew. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from 7 to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop.
Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139.